Today I'm speaking with DW's Director General about the media, democracy and the man himself. Peter Limburg, welcome to the DW interview. Thank you, Mr. Spahn. Great to have you with us. My name is Thomas Spahn. Mr. Limburg, you have a special relationship to Germany because you didn't grow up here. Your father was a diplomat who worked in Paris, Rome, Athens and Brussels. What would you say is typically German? Typically German? Definitely the great German cuisine, which you can always look forward to. Then the fact that people abroad always associate us with punctuality, propriety, trustworthiness. Maybe not very much for a country like Germany. I think in Germany there is a sentiment, a feeling, expressed by the word Heimat, home, which doesn't exist anywhere else. I think that's very German, that you can describe this feeling where you come from. To put a negative spin on it, there's something of an inclination towards political romanticism in Germany, which doesn't exist in other countries. But overall, I think throughout my life, much of which I spent abroad, I've always had a good view of Germany. And it doesn't hurt every now and then to see something from the outside rather than just the inside. So I think my life experience means I'm well placed to do the job I do. I have a very German sentence for you. DW should present Germany as a European nation of culture and a liberal constitutional democracy. That one sentence presents a demanding task. That is DW's broadcasting mandate. How do you do that in practical terms? With a lot of interesting programs. I think the most important task that the lawmakers have given us is to inform. That's our most important duty. We have to inform people, especially when there might not be sufficient knowledge about Germany or Europe, or about topics that people aren't allowed to discuss in their own regions of the world because they're censored. Their DW has a huge duty to provide freedom of information. And then there's the entire set of values that we also have to impart. The liberal constitutional democracy that DW represents and which it propagates is crumbling in Poland, Hungary, Russia, Turkey. How does DW react to these developments? We try to refer especially to the issues in those places where we have a broadcast presence, in Turkey, in Russia and in Poland. We try to inform our users, listeners or viewers and give them the outside perspective. We can't tell anyone what they should think. That's not our duty. And we always have to ensure that we manage to remain available to a wide target audience. But we can guarantee freedom of information and also point out that democratic rights aren't a luxury or negotiable in the EU, for example. But when there's a growing number of people who don't consider democratic rights to be that important, who want security, does that mean DW, the voice of democracy, is talking at cross purposes for more and more people? No, I don't think so. I believe the important thing for us, also in countries where democracy is in danger and there is a real lack of freedom, is to be there for those who do believe in democracy. History has shown us that whether in Poland or Greece during times of dictatorship, the DW played an outstanding role as the voice of freedom. And perhaps we are only accessible there for a limited time and only for a minority simply because not everyone can access our services. But we want to offer that minority support, so that people in countries where democracy is at risk can see there are people on the outside who care about them. We're not really there yet in Poland and other parts of Europe, but it's important to us that we don't point a warning finger at them, but continue to demonstrate the merits of democracy.
Right-wing populism is on the rise in Germany as well. The AfD party is entering parliaments. What can journalists do to bring these angry citizens back to the fold? I don't believe that it's DW's job to confront the Germans in Germany with topic matter in any way. Our main task is clearly to address overseas audiences. But we do believe it makes sense for our programming in English, Arabic and Spanish to be made available in Germany as well, in order to build a bridge between different nations and languages. I think that the unrest in Germany and the rise of right-wing populism is something that's happening across Europe. We're no exception. It is nevertheless dangerous when these political parties try to chip away at democracy, when they don't just express themselves in a so-called nationalist manner. But when they stray from the basic principles of democracy, it becomes dangerous, and the job of the media is to identify that and to make every instance of it public, and not to capitulate or stay silent or accept the fact that someone is attacking democracy. That also applies to the U.S., where right-wing populism is in charge. DW awarded a prize for defending press freedom to the White House Correspondents Association in Washington. Do you believe press freedom is in more danger in the U.S. than in Russia or China, for example? No, certainly not. The U.S. is a great democracy, which has shown that it can overcome many challenges, and naturally we hope that it will overcome the current ones. But it seldom occurs that the head of state in an established democracy questions democratic rights, and that includes freedom of the press, which is a prerequisite for democracy. And that is extraordinary. And that's when we say we have to highlight events there as well and show that we don't just focus all our attention on the Southern Hemisphere or on Russia, but that we focus on everywhere where press freedom is threatened. And in the US, that is partly the case right now. Did Donald Trump take issue with you for that prize, send you an angry tweet? No, he did not, and he doesn't have to. I think Donald Trump's tweets speak for themselves, and we need no further exchange there. The fact that Donald Trump also governs by tweeting is a sign, I think, of a turning point in communication generally. Social media is becoming increasingly important for journalists, as well as being able to reach people through the existing channels in a competitive market. Do you think it's to your advantage that you're DW's first director general with a commercial TV background? My commercial TV background perhaps gives me a broader overview of the market and target audiences. Does that mean a better eye for the ratings that rule commercial TV? Yes, that means that the issue of reaching a wide audience is more of a focal point now, although reach isn't everything. We have to be able to make an impact. We need quality journalism. That means we don't do things just for the ratings. We wouldn't put on a new entertainment show to appeal to more people or show funny cat videos. No, we focus on producing high-quality journalistic content that will connect more to people. But of course, without reach, that is irrelevant. You came under criticism at DW because you made cuts to the news coverage on the German channel. Can you imagine France 24, France's international broadcaster, only broadcasting the news in English? No, but they do broadcast in English and are beginning in Spanish. But also in French. Of course, France 24 continues to broadcast in French. But you have to take into account that we have a German-language TV channel, too, which is received worldwide. 
And unlike the French, we don't have such a large community of German speakers. But we continue to broadcast in German, and we are glad to do that. And we still have a news show and short news shows. But it's true that we have made adjustments and are focusing more on cultural programs than in the past. Strengthening the English language programming and cutting back the German one is part of the aim to try to bring DW on par with BBC and CNN. Isn't that a somewhat daredevil, not to say hopeless aim? These broadcasters have twice the budget and only broadcast in English. The BBC broadcasts in other languages, of course, and I think that's our benchmark. That's why I think it is worthwhile to aim high, and that goal isn't impossible to reach. We will reach this goal in many countries and in many languages, of being one of the top three foreign broadcasters. And that's why I think it was right to set ourselves this target, and we're well on the way to achieving that. Mr. Limburg, to round off our interview, we always like to put forward three unfinished sentences and ask our guests to finish them. So, from my father, the diplomat, Peter Limburg Sr., I learned that you need an open view of the world without prejudice and to act wisely. The fact the Sat Eins channel cut my reporting on the election of a new pope in 2013 before the new pope appeared was inappropriate and not the most clever decision by my former employer, who I otherwise have a lot to thank for and hold in great esteem. Probably wouldn't happen at DW. As its director general, I am not obliged to like German music, but my favorite would be. My favorite German music is Bach and Rammstein. Mr. Limburg, thanks for talking to me. You're welcome.